Hello everyone. Welcome to The Planning Professor. My name is Cynthia and I am an English teacher. I have been wanting to make a video about how I use my Erin Condren teacher's lesson planner for quite a while. And I have to say, props to those of you who do these plan with me's all the time. It really is not as easy as it looks to get the tripod just right and the lighting just right and the dogs to be quiet and all that good stuff. But I think I've got it, so I'm hoping this is useful to you. And let's go. So what you're looking at here is the 2016 edition of the Teacher's Lesson Planner. I used this along with an Erin Condren Take Note dot grid notebook to make some tools that I think are really, really useful and unique to my situation as an English teacher. Now, the Erin Condren Teacher's Lesson Planner is absolutely gorgeous, but it's very much geared for a K through 12 audience. And the result is that I purchased the Teacher's Lesson Planner for the first time back in 2015, I believe it was. And there was so much stuff in it that I didn't use that it felt very, very wasteful. So what I decided to do when I purchased this one, and I purchased this when it was on the sale for I think $30 off or something like that, was to try to turn it into a couple of tools that I could really use that would be helpful to me as someone who teaches in higher ed. So those of you who teach uh, the same students all day every day would probably find the regular teacher's lesson planner very useful. Those of you who teach a mixed schedule, I'm thinking junior high, high school, or college, where you're seeing different groups of students throughout the day might find this beneficial. So I did decide that I wanted to get another teacher's lesson planner because it's gorgeous. It's very, very pretty. And I think I'm not alone, teachers, when I say that I do not enjoy grading. Am I right? But Writing things down in a beautiful notebook somehow makes it a little less painful. So I'm gonna walk you through what I did, sort of hybridizing the teacher's lesson planner and the dot grid notebook to make two coil bound planners, I guess, because they're really, the other one's a planner too, that better suit my needs in higher ed. So what I will say is there was some waste because there is not a way to customize the teacher's lesson planner so that you get fewer lesson plan pages, which are actually the pages that I need the least. In college, most schools run between a 14 and a 16 week semester. I am on a 16 week semester. So I do not need that many pages because I do not have 40 weeks, I think is what they give you, 40 weeks of classes. So I felt kind of guilty actually in purchasing another one of these only to pull out those pages and recycle them. But I did use them as scratch paper and they, they went to good use but not their intended use. So in order to do what I did here, you would need the teacher's lesson planner and the dot grid notebook. You could use the productivity or the lined. These are both the larger of the Erin Condren sizes, the nine by 11 and or maybe it's eight and a half by 11. And what I did was uncoil both of them and then really go through page by page and sort what I was gonna keep and what I was gonna toss. So in the case of the teacher's lesson planner, let me show you what I'm left with. I did use the, the coil from the take note dot grid notebook, which is a little smaller here than the one you get in the teacher's lesson planner. But again, because I don't have all those lesson planning pages, I didn't need the ginormous coil. I decided to use that for this other uh, planner that I've created. So what I did here um, with the first page, actually was to glue it together. There was, I think, passwords or notes for a substitute or something. Um, and they were things I wouldn't ever use. I like this, I wanted to keep it their space for your name. Um, I usually decorate this page, I haven't done that yet. But then the next page that I kept was the July to June, the academic calendar, and these are the holidays. And I made them pretty with some washi. You can see some bad stuff went on over here, oops. Um, pro tip. Those adhesive rollers, those really, really stick. So I did have a little mishap. September doesn't look as pretty as it could be, but all in all, I, I like this. I like being able to look at a glance and see what holidays are coming up. Uh, I also like that they, um, Aaron Condren have included these little asterisk holidays. They are things like the first day of autumn. Let's see, there's National Library Week, Daylight Savings Time, there's religious holidays. So it's kind of nice. Right, and I thought it was pretty. I decided it was worth keeping. I liked the little dates tab. I'm a big sucker for laminated tabs. Um, the next page I kept was this happy birthday to you spread, and I actually don't track my students' birthdays because there are just too many of them in any given semester I have between 
125 and 200 students and it's just too hard to keep track. But what I do use this for are my colleagues' birthdays. The English department has, um, there are a dozen of us actually, and fun story, we're all born between September and May. So we're all meant to be teachers apparently born during the academic year. But I like to keep track of if there's some kind of big event on campus, I'll go ahead and write it down just to remind myself that it's coming, kind of. Okay, and so this stayed, um, and I also wanted to keep this uh, checklist tab, which I'll show you in a second. Now this page here is kind of useless space to me. The absentee log, there was a second part to it. All right, so the absentee log is not useful to me because I don't have the same student all day every day, and instead I have to track attendance every day in every class, so I do use the checklist pages for that, and I will show you that in a second. So I took half the absentee log page, and then between the absentee log and this checklist were all of these lesson planning pages. Now I did try last year to use these up, but what I found is that they just didn't work for me nearly the way that I wanted them to work. So I ended up using a lot of these up as scratch paper, but what I did was move the rest um, here to the back, and I'll show you that in a second. So for me, the most useful part of the Erin Condren Teacher's Planner are these checklist pages. And sorry, there's a ruler there. Let's get that out of the way. Let's go to a page without a ruler, maybe. And there are, you can order as much as 28 of these. And these, to me, are gorgeous. They're fun. Every other line is gray, which makes it easy to record student information. Now, they have an emergency kit thing, which I'm assuming you folks in K-12 know what that means. For me, this gets whited out, and I use it to track assignments, actually. So this page, there are 35 lines, I believe it is. Yeah, I think 35. For those of you who have classes of up to 35 students, there are 33 columns across the page here, plus this emergency kit makes 34. So what I like to use this for are for each of my classes, I go ahead and white out the student checklist or put in a, a sticker or some washi or something and then identify what the class is and what's being tracked on this page. So usually I use a whole page for attendance and then you can actually fold these over. You can fold along the line, which I do because I don't like to, if I cut it off, I'll lose all of these checklists or all of these columns here. So you just fold it over and then track assignments, essays, grades, whatever. Um, but these are beautiful, and if I could get a notebook, a coil-bound notebook full of just these, I would be so happy because they make grading fun as much as that is possible. Now, Erin Condren has just come out with a teacher's record book, which is a hardbound version of something that looks very similar to this. I don't have it yet. I don't think I'm going to purchase it because I tend not to be a super big fan of the bound Erin Condren notebooks. I did purchase a hardbound life planner to try it out, but I love the coil. The rose gold is just gorgeous, and I don't have to worry about breaking the binding or anything like that. So for me, I would love if they had just a whole notebook full of these, but they don't. So what I did was, in rearranging this, these I use every day. I use them in every class. I go in, I track attendance every day, and we have to actually do that for state requirements. So there are 28 of these, which is the maximum that I could get when I ordered it. Then at the end of those, right, these are some pages that were from the beginning. Oh, looks like this is the other half of the attendance log. Haha, <laughs> okay, so I forgot it was back here. Um, after these are done, I put in, there is a graph tab, and this graph paper does come with the teacher planner. Those of you who grade things or track things using graph paper, there are one, two, three, four, four pages of graph paper, and then you see another switch. So th some of you might be going nuts right now at all the switching, and I'm sorry. It is not as pretty as it could be, but it's more functional than it would be for me otherwise. So what I did there was take out the lesson, some of the lesson planning pages, and just put in this pretty dot grid paper. I love, I'm a graph paper nerd. I've always loved it. I think it's great for taking notes, right? It kind of sort of creates self-outlining pages, which is fantastic. And I think I put in two of each page, two of each color. One, two. That was a lie. I put in one of each color. So there are about 15 pages of dot grid paper. You see we come back to graph paper because I stuck them in, in the middle. And then they have a long-range planning, year-long plan, which would have been at the front of the planner, I believe, if I had done this in order. But I like to use this for things at the end of the semester for the coming academic year. Um, I, I find it helpful 
to think long range. As a college professor, we tend to work on five-year cycles. Right? Our programs come up for review every five years, and I like to use this to track things like changes that we've implemented to the curriculum since the last program review. This could have stayed at the front, I suppose, but I was actually also trying to get these tabs to line up, kind of, and it made sense to me to have this after the record-keeping pages, but before the lesson planning. So. There are some lined pages for notes, and some of these were actually from last year. I don't know if you can see this little sticker here. I did sticker up my last year's planner, so it looks like I really made this a Dr. Frankenstein's monster. But I thought these were really pretty. This chalkboard, I love the mid-century circle so much. I miss them. I know many of you are Painted Petals fans out there, um, and those are pretty enough, but I don't think I was ever going to love anything as much as I loved these mid-century circles, and I tried to keep every single page I physically could keep that had them. So the front part of the planner is going to be the stuff that's really, really functional to me. I actually debated not even including any of these lesson plan pages, but decided I would give it one more try. So the lessons tab is here, and let me give you a page without a bookmark. And the way it's organized is by week of the semester, days of the week, done it running down the y-axis, and subject, period, and time running across the x-axis, which I guess would make sense, but it's not the way my brain works, actually. So what I did, let me show you last year's planner, because I think I'm gonna do something similar again. When I was able to make this kind of useful for myself, I did it using this setup, which was to, sure you can see that. Okay. I had um, covered up all the stuff with pretty decorations. I washied it up because one can never have too much glittery washi, right? Of course not. Down the side, I wrote the classes that I was teaching in any given semester. So depending on the semester, I'll have between one and three different preps and five total classes. But they're all t learning the same stuff in each of those classes. So English 151 is the same whether I'm teaching it on Monday, Wednesday, or Tuesday, Thursday. So it made more sense to me to figure out by class, right, what I'm going to do. And I had the class and then the homeworks. So what I figured I would do is in each columns, I would figure out what I'm going to do on a given day of the semester. Now we meet 32 times a semester, 16 weeks, two times a week. So rather than figure out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I figured in week number and day number. So what I've got in my Erin Condren labels up here are week, this is a week eight example, week number eight, day number one. And that doesn't matter whether it's English 151 on Monday, Wednesday, or Tuesday and Thursday, the first day of the eighth week we're doing the same thing in, in English 151. So, and then I figured I would make some brief notes to myself here of what needs to be covered and I tend not to teach from notes. I, I make a, a broad outline for myself of things that have to be covered and, and then I do it. So I don't write down every step of everything I'm gonna cover. What I use this for are broad topics. What are the big things I need to cover that day? And then I'll have a supplemental sheet that I'll bring with me um, with more specific information. And then the homework, I write this in here just to remind myself of what I need to remind my students of. Even though it is on the syllabus, they don't necessarily always look there. So I have that for each of the courses I'm teaching. In this particular semester, I had English 151s and English 095s. And then I have a miscellaneous, which would be for things like committee work or meetings or miscellaneous stuff. So this was kind of useful to me. Um, but again, I didn't find that I had it really as much space as I would need to make it into a full lesson plan. Conversely, I, there were not enough pages to use each page for a day of class. So this worked decently. I think I'll probably do something similar in this year's planner. But yeah, so I did leave these in here, right? And they all look the same, right? There's a bunch of them. I took most of them, a lot of them out. And then at the back, I do have I love, 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 love the Erin Condren sticky notes. I have the, this is the original or traditional, and then these are the rose gold. I think they're both still available on her site. And then what I have here in the pocket are some stickers that I took from last year's planner when I uncoiled it. Um, these I got from Michaels. They're just super cute, little blackboard letters. And then these are the Erin Condrens. And most of these, again, are geared toward 
a K-12, assemblies, IEPs, duty, I'm assuming that's playground, recess, lunchroom, I don't know, duty, staff meetings, furloughs, and holidays. So I did not use any of these. I kept them because I just hate to throw away stickers and I'm hoping maybe I can find a use for them. But those were from last year's. These are, they're the same, just different colors. Okay, and then we have reminders. Report cards, benchmarks, testing, computer lab, library, field trip, emergency drill, first day, last day. And can we talk about how beautiful these colors are? They're just gorgeous, but it broke my heart. I just didn't have a use for them, but I couldn't toss them. And my mission this year is to try to find some way to make them useful. These all say the same thing, but they're on little flags rather than being little labels. You can see I did get some use out of the Erin Condren labels because they're just gorgeous and the colors are great. So I did keep all of the stickers in the hopes that suddenly I will be sticker inspired in this year's teacher planner to use them. And then there's another side of the pocket and we come to the back page. There were actually three document holder sleeves which I took out because I just don't ever keep documents like that. If I'm going to hold on to anything if I get um, accommodations requests or something, I'll put them in the folder for the semester. So that is the end of the teacher planner and how I sort of redid it to make it more useful for my, my particular needs. So let's actually jump over then to the take note notebook, which is the other part of the teacher planner. So you'll see the missing guts that came out of the teacher planner and went into here. So, right, you see it's a doc read notebook. We still have some graph paper. There's, this is another plan your year. This I took from one of my teacher planners. This might be the old one, because I didn't get any use out of the one last year, but I figured maybe I'll hold on to it. Um, oh, we were playing with some washi on a notes page here. Um, there's another one of these lovely blackboard slate pages. But what I did was take all of the monthly tabs Right, which ran from January to December out of my new teacher planner and put them into my notebook to create for myself kind of a large version of the Erin Condren Deluxe Monthly Notebook before there was such a thing. Now, Erin Condren just released the Deluxe Monthly 2018 version, which does have this option where you can get it in the larger size. Okay, so we're looking at January here, and this is not a true Deluxe Monthly notebook because if it were, there would be a page, like a dot grid page here. There would be the full spread, and I believe there are some goals pages and kind of a productivity page here. So this is the remnants of what was in the teacher planner. If you order the teacher planner, it's going to come with all of those front pages. It's going to come with a year of monthly tabs. It's going to come with lesson plans and a checklist section. So what I did was take these out and kind of made for myself, right, this, this monthly notebook. And what's kind of nice about this, right, is you have the full spread of January, you can put in your date dots or write it in or whatever. I'm gonna have to cover these up because it's 2016 and 2017. I won't be using this until 2018. But afterward, you get three lined pages and those colors match the month that follows. So after January, you get three pages of notes before February. Right, you get three pages of notes before March. Three pages of notes before April. And again, I love the blackboard motif. I think it's so pretty. It's very teacherly. Uh, here is April. Whoops. <laughs> it looks like I'm missing a notes page before May. But okay, whatever. Um, here's May. Right, three pages of notes before June. Three pages of notes before July. Three pages of notes before August. Three pages of notes before September. Three pages of notes before October. Three pages of notes before November. And isn't that blue just beautiful? 
three pages of notes before December. I don't really love the lime green, but okay. And then after those monthly pages, all right, I've got some more graph paper. I kept the graph paper tab from my new, oops, can you see that? There it is, graph paper tab, uh, from my new Erin Condren teacher notebook. And I put in the rest of my dot grid pages from my notebook. So the rest of this is just functional notes pages for myself. So it's kind of a giant It's kind of a giant monthly notebook. I, I could have interspersed these within the monthly calendars as well. I don't know if it will be um, maybe my meetings notebook that I take with me to meetings, write down the meetings on the calendar and then take notes back here. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do it, but I can tell you that I love the dot grid notebooks so much and they are the ones I use the most even though I have a productivity notebook and a lined notebook as well in each size the small and the large so for me I thought this might be a way to get better use because I never use these monthly tabs in the teacher planner that's just not the way the academic calendar lines up for me it's not real helpful so what I try to do is again make this useful as much as I could um, note to self think less live more and then I have my lovely, beautiful mid-century circles or plan for it pouch. You see I've got um, some date dots in here. I've got the world's cutest little Kate Spade paper clips, some Erin Condren metallic page flags, um, and just miscellaneous stickers. And then the pocket from the newer teacher planner that I kept in with the notebook. And what I have in here are just blank flags or blank stickers and flags. Right, there are six different colors, really beautiful, six different colors of flags. And then these came from the notebook, the dot grid notebook that I cannibalized to make this. So I've got a whole bunch of stickers for myself here that will make this really, really pretty. And that is it. So I hope this is useful. Um, if you have suggestions for ways that I might make this even more useful, please let me know. If you think this is really dumb and I've wasted your time, I'm very sorry. But I was trying to find a way to really use and make this teacher notebook as helpful as possible. And the best way I could figure is that there's really enough stuff for two different, two different planners, really. So this is kind of a not really deluxe monthly cannibalized notebook slash dot grid collection. And this is a much slimmed down teacher notebook. Okay, so this back one here, this was the teacher planner coil, this was the notebook coil, and as you can see, they're about the same size now in terms of thickness, so it really took one notebook and broke, broke them into two, and I think it will be really helpful to me uh, in the coming school year. So thanks so much for watching. I will provide a link down below that you can go ahead and use. If you do decide to order something from Erin Condren and you use that link, it's a referral link, which means that Whatever you purchase, you will get $10 off your first order by virtue of registering using my referral link. And I will get $10 as well to buy more beautiful things and, and share with you. So thanks so much for watching and I will talk to you soon. Bye.